right, everybody. It is Steve, the Rogue Scholar, and this is our last, um, you know, episode of the Rogue Scholar, um, you know, before the new year. And we're going to go ahead and kind of take a look at the where we've been, what got us here, and where we're going. Um, so strap on. I'm going to try to expose people that maybe are not aware of uh, all the factors that we do here. I'm going to try and show as much of who we are to you all as I possibly can. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to say, you know, I had a experience yesterday. I was trying to record a um, a short, uh, I guess, kind of like a, a 15 minute and below piece for status quo yesterday regarding um, the fact that BlackRock is going to Ukraine and working with Zelensky to make Ukraine a uh, business-friendly place, an investment-friendly place, and went into the IMF and all this stuff. But the problem for me is, is that I'm not a talking head. Or I'm not a, uh, you know, this is Bruce Almighty, and that's how the cookie crumbles. I don't have the ability to do this just in, breaking news, and, and do the whole, you know, news real guy. I'm a storyteller, right? So trying to bust out a short clip, you know, very control, concise, whatever. I wish I could do it well. Maybe a someday I could if I aspired to learn how to do it. But I, <clears throat> I see me as a storyteller. And so part of the deal is, is that I, it took forever. It took me like 15 takes to do what amounts to be about a 10 to 12 minute video. I, I was like, I've been in front of a camera now for a decade and I'm sitting there flipping, flipping out that I couldn't get this. Anyway, that's just a little inside story here, but let's look at RP as a whole. So as you know, going back, going way back, going back to 2015, when we started, we were just a little teeny Facebook group and we made the group. It was maybe 500 members in there and we made the group uh, private. We didn't understand that once you made a group secret or private that you couldn't unmake it, you know, secret or private. So we were trying to figure out how we could share posts to the rest of the world. And lo and behold, unfortunately, <laughs> we were unable to, uh, to do all that. Um, but let me just show you so you can see this right here is our Real Progressives group. Real Progressives group started before anything else having to do with Real Progressives. We've got, let's see here. I don't know if it'll say it right off the bat, but I believe that we have approximately 20,000 members in this group. I'm not really sure why I'm not able to see it in this, but we, we have approximately, oh, there you go, 18,400 uh, members in this group. And this this is where it all began. And because we had made it a private group and nobody could share, and you still can't share. If you come in here, every you can send a message, but you can't actually share. You can't actually share the posts. So we went ahead and we created Real Progressives page to go ahead and do this. Okay. So there you have it. We have 125,000 followers on Real Progressives, the page. And this is where really it all began. We didn't have any intention of focusing on YouTube at the time. We really didn't focus on much of anything other than our Facebook page. And we've done so much, so much over the years since 2015 when this all got started. In fact, we even included this right here, which is, Right here is macro, uh, excuse me, the modern monetary theory for real progressives group, which you can see up here has 6.3 thousand members. Okay. This is where I'd like to see people talking and learning about MMT. I'd like to bring people into our group here. And you can see we've got people posting, lots of folks that post in here, lots of really good stuff, great conversations, smart people that are coming in talking about stuff, but we, you know, of course, over time, you know, it's hard to keep people engaged. And so as we move into 2023, I'm hoping that with volatile, uh, the volatile nature of Twitter, um, and people decentralizing 
to Mastodon, which I cannot stand Mastodon. Um, I'm hoping that people will come into Real Progressives group. We've got tons of great content in there. We have MMT for Real Progressives. I hope you come here as well. I mean, we've got lots going on in there. Lots, lots, lots going on in there. And then, of course, we have macro and cheese. This is kind of weird. This one right here, I would have thought we would have had way more follows on this page than we do. And I'm trying to find the number, and it's just not jumping out at me. I'm not quite sure. But here's all the other pages that we have. You know, I, I'm a admin for Modern Monetary Theory, admin for Modern Monetary Theory for Real Progressives, get End the Fetish, uh, Real Progress in Action, of course, Macro and Cheese, and so forth. Anyway, there's thousands of followers on here, but it's nowhere near enough. It really is. It's nowhere near enough. And I uh, hope you guys will try to follow us on our Facebook pages and stuff because um, that's where we built this place. That's where we built this place. Okay. So with that in mind, I want to take you here. This is our Real Progress in Action page. We've got just 4.4 thousand followers over there. Okay. Nowhere near as much as uh, Real Progressives, which has 125,000. Um, but anyway, just want you guys to see this is what we are. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Well, I'm not going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to take you guys now to our website. And if you look, our website to me is very important. So I'm going to just show it. This right here is where a lot of learning can occur. Okay. Yes, and by the way, chatter definitely helps the algorithms. But if you come in here to our homepage, this right here used to be a little bit more exciting, okay? A little bit more exciting. Um, but the way we've got it laid out, hopefully it's more accessible. You can tell our Macro and Cheese podcast, this is episode 204, folks. If you go back through here, look at this. I mean, Jason Hickel, 185, geoengineering. We've, we've covered every cloud money, uh, end of dollar diplomacy, class struggle unionism, taming inflation, Pakistan's false dawn. Look at this, 163. Each one of these things, approximately an hour long, 200 hour long podcasts. That's kind of amazing. We've never missed a beat, never missed a beat. Just keep coming through here. I want you to see this because you can go through here, learn about Spain, learn about sustainability, learn about all sorts. I mean, just literally, we've covered as much as I can think to cover at this point, and we're going to keep growing it. We're going to keep continuing to cover new topics that will add to your understanding of the world around you. But little things like what if we lose faith, you know, in the dollar and, um, the battle for America's schools, the fall of Evergrande, MMT Europe, waking up light bulb moments. Anyway, degrowth, uh, fiscal uh, money and Europe. I mean, bottom line is that we've got so much here. Look at all that. Is that not ridiculous? I mean, that is, in my opinion, a treasure trove of information. I've done my best to give you guys as, as activists a PhD level understanding of the world around you. And, and it, it's all valuable if we can get folks to come and look and, and really use the resources. I mean, look, I'm not even done scrolling. When we talk about the bond market, you come all the way down here at the very beginning. Look at this, putting the T in MMT with Bill Mitchell. That's the very first episode that we got. I mean, seriously, look at this. Fodle, environmental justice, sustainability. We've got 12 years with Dr. Stephen Hale. We got uh, the world of MMT with uh, Professor Kelton and Bill Mitchell. I mean, literally. And sometimes, like this one right here, Alan. This guy, this, um, we, we, we lost a good friend there in Alan Nasser. He passed away a few years back from brain cancer. Very, very depressing and sad uh, but I want you to see that and if you come over here under mmt basics we've got a lot of answers in here under the mmt basics i'm just not sure people actually come to our website and and do anything with it I, if you don't do something with it it's a shame because we try to answer 
so many of your questions here and it's only going to get better and i'm going to explain that here momentarily you scroll down look at this i mean you you want to know about questions mmt we've got it right here look at this i mean seriously we've tried so hard to build a place for you guys to come to learn to 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 educate yourselves and and it's my hope you guys will take advantage of this so if you come in here we also have international resources because mmt is not just a u.s phenomenon it's global look at this look i mean you know we we have literally provided you with so much information it's just a question of if you don't know where it is how do you get to it but look at it. Look at all this information. I mean, we're here for everyone. Italian, Spanish, everyone, Africa, you name it. And then you come down here, and this is super important, folks. I've talked to you all at length about the race to the bottom, state by state. We've even got that baked into our website. Talks about the rainy day funds. Under Look at this. And if you click on them, they'll take you into a deeper dive in each state. But if you're not looking at our website, you'll never know this. And you already know, I, I guess I don't need to tell you this, but you already know that when you go to your other alt media, they're not covering this. They're just not. And, um, you know, that gives us room to do it, right? That gives us room to do it. You come up here to our focus. This is one of the other things that really kind of hurts my feels a little bit. I get up in my feels on this one, okay? But RP was never meant to just be some live streaming thing where people come and they watch Steve once a day or once a week or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I always intended this to be a think tank. And I always intended it to be an education center. And I always intended it to be a media outfit and with activism to boot. So we have four pillars that I, I talk about. One of them is the policy pillar to go over what would be good policy. Now, mind you, we have to balance the world with two brains. And if you're not here where I'm about to go, I want to get you where I'm at, okay? We have to be able to do things actionable today. Like, we can't be all aspirational. I know that many socialists in the world have largely checked out of what can we do today to make things better because they're worrying about the revolution that may or may not ever come right you got to create the conditions for the revolution to come it seems like they keep just enough frogs from you know boiling that people aren't willing to do it but anyway four pillars pillars how do i say a pillar think of a pillar as a work area the policy pillar everything in the policy pillar is about taking white papers about taking the work from these great academics and actually taking their work and elevating it as part of that. But the other part of that is dissecting policy from people that are putting it out there that it just ain't the right thing. Like we've addressed the state-by-state -state approach to Medicare for all and other things like that many times. That's all part of our policy pillar discussion, okay? Obviously, that makes for a challenge because we've got to be able to do it professionally, but yet at the same time, as activists, explain why public banking can't give us X, Y, Z, or explain why state by state is the wrong approach. And things like this race to the bottom are really important uh, ways of addressing that. All right. But if I come in here to economic justice, we have seven knowledge areas that we focus on. So under economic justice, economic justice is not about money. It's about equitable distribution of real resources. So when we come in here, we have these different tabs that teach, give you a good overview of what we can do. Economic justice. Let's look at that. Income inequality is an all-time high. The majority of the new wealth ends up in the hands of the 1%. We've been led to believe our government is broke or in debt and unable to spend for the public good. We've been lied to, right? What can we do? There are more options than you might think, but they will not come easy without a solid understanding of basic macroeconomics. We're here to help teach the 99%. Remember that our peers, we're here to help teach the 99%. This is how we work together and win. 
job guarantee, federal job. Anyway, you can start to see lots of important stuff here. Okay. Lots and lots of important stuff. If you're not using this, why not? Why not use it? Why not come in here and learn this stuff? Okay. Now, if I come up here to the next one, our focus, we have environmental justice. So now it's not just the uh, economic justice. Now we're talking about environmental ecological justice. Right? Look at this. You know, you keep looking at what we've got. We're, we're trying really, really hard to explain these things to regular people. So if you don't use this, nobody, it, it, it's like if a tree falls in the woods and no one hears it, did it make a sound? Well, if we don't get people to our website and if we don't get people following our work, it doesn't matter how much we put together, does it? Nobody's going to learn it. So we need your help getting people out here to these things. All right, so if we come down here, obviously we've got natural resource, sustainability, energy, weaponizing knowledge one mind at a time. Look, here's all of our knowledge areas. Once again, you don't even have to go through it just up here under our focus. You can come down here to health and well-being. Now all of a sudden it talks. Healthcare inequalities, endanger us all, lack of mental health funding. For, anyway, you get the point. All seven of our knowledge areas right there, economic justice, environmental, ecological justice, peace with justice, equality with justice, democracy, health and well-being, and technology and innovation. This right here, very, very important stuff. Okay. So let me go down here now. Get out of that momentarily. Come over here to get involved. Now, our RP events calendar is kind of light right now. Guess why? Any any idea why our RP events calendar is light? Let me tell you why our RP calendar is light. We had a lot of people. And we go through ebbs and flows like all volunteer organizations do. But unfortunately, the world is filled with people that don't follow through and finish what they start. It just is. It's It stinks. But if you've ever gone through like country living rural areas and you see that guy it's got 10 cars in his yard or up on blocks and got a bunch of projects started and lots of tarps over it because got started and couldn't finish or whatever that's unfortunately what's happened at rp we 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 get a couple steps into the process and then three or four people decide they're going to do something else so it's a challenge trying to rope people in get people excited and enthused and not have them flake out and move on and do something else. It's incredibly dispiriting and heart wrenching when you think you've got a team ready to rock and roll and then a bunch of people just vanish. It's, it's a lethal is it is literally soul sucking when it happens. There's no worse feeling in the world, but for the people that have stuck around, we're continuing to build these things continuing to build these things and we've got a lot going on and that's i can't wait to get to what the future is this is the current the future is coming so we got rp merchandise too folks i mean i'm not here i'm not humping the stuff we don't make hardly any money off of it it's not like a big money making thing it's really more of an awareness thing um and so right here i want you to see this this right here dreadnought this is a product that we were supposed to do for whatever reason it didn't come to be but dreadnought is supposed to be our um pretend like it's our jacobin magazine it's supposed to be our real progressives uh news outlet if you will publishing articles and long form essays and things like that we're still going to do it it's still on the back burner but that right there dreadnought is really cool and if you think about it do you know what dreadnought is Dreadnought is like the first plated ships, ships that transformed the, the way that uh, naval battle was done. And the reason why we chose that was because it was kind of such a rogue disrupt, disruptive force at the time. It was literally like next generation. It was completely genre defining, if you will. And we were hoping that our work within the MMT space as leftists and trying to show the left how we can achieve goals that we have. Well, that's why we named it Dreadnought. 
Anyway, obviously, you know, we've done the new Untouchables. We've got macro and cheese. This is the classic Real Progressive shirt. I created that thing on my phone using something. I can't even remember the app anymore. But I created this logo right here before it became this logo over here, the professional one. But I still happen to like my Chuck Taylor all-star look. I still like it a lot. But anyway, Macro and Cheese is obviously our podcast. Come through here. Here, the Rogue Scholar, the Austera T in black. Kind of cool, right? Kind of cool. Dread. I gotta love Dreadnought. I can't wait till we get our heads out. I I love it. Love it. Love it. Look at this one. Look at that cool. Look at this one. I think that's pretty cool, right? Federal taxes don't fund spend federal spending. <laughs> kind of cool, right? Right? I think so. Anyway, so you keep going through here, and, and we've obviously got tons of stuff, right? We got some fun stuff, we got throwback stuff, we got baby stuff, we got our book club. That right there is our book club that we do. If you look, that's the logo for the book club. And we're going to be doing several book clubs coming up here soon. Um, and I think that if we are going to teach people book clubs are a pretty good way of doing it. Since most people don't take the time to read, maybe they'll take the time to talk to people and, and learn kind of excited about that. We'll see where it goes. All right, keep going here. And I'm going to get out of this segment. Um, I obviously I'm very partial to that, but we've got some cool MMT learn MMT shirts. You know, I think that, if you look at our merchandise, it, it, we've got tons of fun stuff, tons of fun stuff. And I got to give Jules all the credit in the world. I, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like this. This is going way back. That's me when I was in Grumbine's political mosh pit on my way to a Slayer concert. I took that selfie to let my friends know that we were going to see Slayer and it sort of became part and parcel with the old, uh, uh, Grumbine's political mosh pit. And now we've made a t-shirt. So Anyway, fun times, fun times. All right. So here's the last thing I'm going to say about where we are previously. This right here, if you go to donate, it's kind of an important thing because we have a matching donor right now. We have someone who's willing to match us dollar for dollar. Okay. We, we desperately need it because just little things like uh, the StreamYard account, the professional StreamYard account. And then having Zoom events, Zoom uh, webinar, those things, a couple thousand dollars a year, each one of them, okay? Then you talk about website management, thousands of dollars a year there as well. Then you talk about all the gear. I mean, like this microphone, the mixing boards, the lighting, the green screen, all the stuff that goes with it, lots of money. And we used to have even more people doing content. So you have to have studios for each one of them to do their work too. Um, in any event, you can become a monthly donor, quarterly donor, a weekly donor, or a one-time donor. I mean, there's no amount too small, but look, seriously, we need your help. And if you do the year ending for us, obviously the year ending is going to be matching. So there you go. Double your money by helping out, by donating here at the year end. And, you know, it's, it's what today is the, uh, 30th. So we're looking at Sunday being the end of year. So please, if you guys can find it within you to donate, that would be great. All right. Now we go here to get involved and volunteer. I need volunteers as much as I need money. We need people that will actually do something. Okay. We need something to, yeah, um, as far as that goes, uh, humorous. No, that's not part of this. We agreed to only do it through the donate thing. Um, but super chats are super appreciated. Trust me when I say that. Um, but when you come through here, it's like real progressives are looking for writers, organizers, volunteer coordinators, social media warriors, MMT warriors, understanding economics, interested in doing video spots and potentially more for produced videos and ongoing shows. Please. Volunteer. I mean, you know, we need lots of people. And if you can only do a little teeny bit of time, let us know. We can find tasks that are going to fit within your available time frame. 
Obviously, we need people that are willing to commit more time because we got big things we want to do. And, um, you know, we're nowhere near ready to pay anybody a salary. So I don't even want to talk about that. We've been looking at trying to do this for a long time. But unfortunately, donations just aren't at that level where we could do something like that, unfortunately. If you come in here, answer a few questions, we'll get our guys out there uh, to help you. All right. So I am going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen now. And I am going to talk to you directly. So coming up in the future, we have talked about for years having panel discussions where we would go through our seven knowledge areas, which I just went through. And we would have people based on certain key topics come on and debate and discuss those topics in, in a way that is real and actionable for you as an act, uh, activist and as a voter and as a person that wants to be involved and understand the world around them. The goal is to educate and to activate, right? It's good to be smart. It's even better to do something with the knowledge. So our goal is to take you and get you trained up, get you learned up, teach you some skills. And, you know, before I go too far into that, I want to be clear. We're a nonprofit. So even though we are a volunteer organization, the work you do here, if you do, if you do project management work, there's nothing preventing you from putting, I am a project manager at Real Progressives on your resume and explain the projects that you've worked on. Now, if you're not working on projects, you say you're a volunteer, but you're not really doing anything, please don't put it on your resume because I'm not going to know what to say if somebody calls me to ask me about your work history. If you don't show up, if you don't check in, if you don't, if you don't actually work in the stuff we're doing, probably not going to give you uh, uh, some sort of a, you know, a, a recommendation or anything like that. So it, it, there is a yin and a yang to this. I'm looking for people to actually do something. So if you do put it on you, we can put it out on your resume, right? If, if you do video editing, we use professional video editor software like the Adobe Creative Cloud. So you have industry um used software that you can put on your resume and tell people i am trained in adobe premiere pro i'm trained in after effects i'm trained in um adobe audition i'm trained in um i don't know what all the different programs photoshop um illustrator you name it you can do that that's real and that's a legitimate thing you're a video editor at a nonprofit. See how this works? Unfortunately, I can't get people to realize that. And so a lot of times they just show up, do a drive-by and keep on going. But the fact is, is that what better way to get work experience that they demand? Like as a project manager, which is what I do for a living, you know, if I don't have projects I'm working on, they don't think that I have any experience. You could get trained as a project manager, take classes through Udemy. If you look, I'm sure you probably will see this, but up here at the top, Right here on my screen, you see I have the link for Udemy. Udemy is a great online university that allows you to take classes that will help you get certified and do all kinds of stuff. And let's be fair, we have to actually work and live in this world. We got to eat, we got to have shelter, we got to do things. So having a job, having something to pay your bills is a great thing. And if you're not skilled, we offer the opportunity to try to get skilled, right? That's kind of part of the deal here. That's the what's in it for me. I just got to find a way to make people see the what's in it for me and actually do it. Right. <laughs> That's the key, isn't it? So um, thank you so much, humorous. And let me go ahead and put this super chat up there. He says, I hope your teeth are feeling better. Teeth are feeling momentarily better. Cause I am hopped up on all kinds of uh, anti-inflammatories. Um, hope you and your family had a good holiday. And I hope this helps with what I just donated. You all have a great day now. Love you all. Thank you so much. Humorous. We love you too. All right. So with that in mind, um, I'm hoping that people see the what's in it for me, the, the actual project management skills, the process management skills. We're teaching you to problem solve for a nonprofit, for activists, but these skills translate to the real world if you don't sit there muted on a phone call and don't contribute. Because if you sit there muted on a phone call, don't contribute, don't put it on your resume because I'm not going to sit there and give you the big old thumbs up. Just not. I'm looking for people really genuinely that will lean in and do work, show up, 
ready to do things, show up with the jersey on, so to speak, right? But as part of that each one teach one mindset, as part of that whole package, we're in the process of also trying to create an online university. And so laying out the coursework, obviously there's people that have master's degree programs out there. And if you've got the money and you've got the desire to go get a master's degree, go do it because the world needs people to change the world. However, most people are not going to somehow or another suddenly become economists and so forth. So we're trying to give you enough information to educate, activate in your local communities. And hopefully you'll be one of the people that will help us take our business model as a nonprofit, as an activist community, and take it out to build chapters across the country and eventually around the world. I hope, I hope, hope. So with that, it'll it'll be everything from junior basics to more and more in-depth socialist theory as we go. A lot of this will be mirroring my own personal learning curve because for those of you who don't know, part of the thrill of Real Progressives for me is that I'm on a learning journey as well. And I'm bringing you guys along with me for the ride. You know, I have a master of business administration and a master of science and technology management. I have a graduate certificate in strategic management of technology and innovation. I also have an undergrad certificate in IT project management. I'm a certified project manager. I'm a certified scrum master, and I'm a certified ITIL foundation three kind of dude, service management, you name it. I've got a resume out the wazoo. Okay. And I'm trying to take my business knowledge and I'm trying to take my process and project management knowledge and give it to people who otherwise would be left behind. But if you don't take advantage of it, what can I do? If you don't show up, you come up with a reason not to do it. What can I do? You can lead a horse to water. You can't force them to drink, but we have a real opportunity to do some major, major uh, change management in society by building these things out, if we can get folks motivated and you know involved and in helping us build these things. That said, we're going to have panel discussions. Talked about it before. It's very challenging. We need people to run webinars, right? To, the webinar software that we have is Zoom webinar. Okay. We also have something that we would love to build out further. It's like a virtual. Um, I don't even know how you call it. It's kind of like a virtual um, conference called AirMeet. And AirMeet has tables. You could set up at a table and you could virtually walk through the, the conference and you could stop by table by table. Different videos would play, different, um, uh, different presentations could be there, different discussions maybe even at each table. This is something that we have and we desperately would like to leverage. Sadly, we can't get anybody to stay committed to doing platforms because we can't get people committed to doing platforms. These great ideas, these tools that we have that really could change the world never get done because we can't get people to say, hey, it's more important that I do this than do something else. And that's a challenge. It's a challenge for us to make it more exciting, I guess. Or it's more important maybe for us to figure out a way to somehow or another get folks to lean in and do it, to see the value and lean in and do it. Because it's as important to have you helping us with the work as it is for the donation. And what the heck? Here we got humorous one more time, right? Yeah, and you have a master's in speaking with people, conveying thoughts, kindness, generosity, the list goes on. And I find that every dollar I have ever spent on your show makes me a little bit more intelligent. It certainly showed me how austerity made me homeless. Dude, I, wow. All I can tell you is thank you for your support. I really, really appreciate it. I really do. Really, truly do. Um, but I want, I want you all to understand this is a... It's a nonprofit, but it's a we place. It's a place where you guys can get involved. You guys can really, really engage in the kind of stuff that we're doing. And if we can get you to do that, we can change the world. And so the idea of having those panel discussions and having somebody run the webinars for us and having people get together and build the curriculum and go out and invite the guests and get it all set up, this is the kind of planning that we need done. 
Then we need people there the day of the event to run the webinar itself and to be in the audience and, and curate questions and, and engage the audience. So all these things are there. Okay. We also, and this is the super, to me, this is super exciting. Okay. If we can somehow or another take all the work that we've done for macro and cheese and turn it into a book, find a way to take those transcripts and all the learning and tie it together to build what would be the greatest book of all time. I can just imagine the kind of lives it could change. Cause I think that the podcast itself is fantastic. If I die tomorrow and I don't produce another podcast, I feel like the work that we've done on macro and cheese if it gets in people's hands and people listen to it, not just for entertainment, but listen to it, really listen to it. I think that you're going to find that you're much, much more informed by the end. We avoid the nonstop conspiracy theories and the, the insanity. We really focus our time on those important things. So I hope that we can do that. Can we? I don't know. I hope so. Okay. But it would be great to be able to have a lot more webinars, a lot more real progressives lives or RP lives where we bring a guest in, they talk about their book, they talk about whatever it is, and then the audience actually engages with the guest. I think it's fantastic. We do a lot of them. It would be great to do a lot more of them. But in the end, we need people that will actually show up, share our work on Facebook, retweet our work on Twitter, okay? actually leave a comment in the YouTube channel after the live stream so that we have the engagement so that the YouTube algorithm gods don't de de demonetize and deprioritize our content. If we had folks that could do that, could really help us share this out there and get it in other people's hands. I can't tell you how important that is. It's really important. It's really, really, really important. And so we also are going to be having a talk group. Uh, Virginia Cotts has been working tirelessly to kind of put together a kind of macro and cheese afterthought, deconstructing macro and cheese. And so the I idea will be these podcasts, they'll be able to talk about each one of them, go through the, the links and stuff and the extras. And oh, by the way, let me show you that real quick, because I think this is something that we don't see nearly enough, but I think we should. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to our media. I'm going to go to Macro and Cheese podcast directly. I don't know who that guy is. But if you come in here and let's just look at, let's look at Bill Mitchell's case study with Japan. If you look at this on our website, you got show notes, you got transcripts, you've got extras. Let's look at what the extras are. And here, you've got all the books that he talks about in there. You got Bill's writings on Japan. Things that are mentioned in the podcast right here. Go through here. Explains all the stuff that was discussed in the pod. I have no idea how many people actually go through our extras. But look at that. That's just extras. Now watch this. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go over here to transcript. Look at the transcript. These are fully curated. We go through one, two, three edits. You can read the transcripts of all these. I mean, this is a lot of work, guys, gals. I have no idea if you all know how much work it is to actually do a transcript like this but it's a lot of work. Let me shrink myself down. I'm not nearly as important as the topic here, but then you go up here and we've also been doing this thing. Come in here. You can share. See that right there. You can share the podcast right from here. Now, the thing I don't like about our share thing from there is it doesn't give you any kind of write up for what it is. So let's go ahead and let's do that for a second. And I'm going to put Billy blog. There you go. 
Bill Mitchell. Go ahead and put a little thing here so that people get the hashtag. And I'm going to also go ahead and tag macaron cheese. Pretty simple stuff. Took me a couple seconds here. And then I'm going to do this weird thing. I'm going to go tweet. Bam. It's out the chute. So once that goes out there, you guys feel free to hit that like button. Feel free to either retweet it or quote retweet it. But there you go. This right here, that's how it works, man. That's how it works. If we can get folks to do that, we're going to be a really good place. So, all right, let's go to the next, next part of this here. Let me shrink this over here. All right. All right. So with that in mind, I just to promote RP, like for no other purpose, folks, I go on political misfits probably twice, three times a month as a kind of a talking head guest uh, representing not only real progressives, but real progress in action, our 501c4 which is this channel here and also um, representing, um, you know, all the work that we do for macaron cheese, the rogue scholar, you name it. Um, but I'm also at status coup and status coup. I will do a, let's get ready to grumble Friday. My way I'll do little shorts in between. I do all kinds of funny stuff with uh, wigs, things like that. So I try my best to make this stuff as accessible to people as possible. I try and do as much as I can. And so what you're going to see going forward also, aside from those trying to get the word out by doing all these guest appearances, just on Jen Perlman the other day, did an hour and a half show there. I, I mean, I, there's some days where I do four shows in one day, four shows in one day. That is insane. But I do. There are days I do four shows in one day. And I think that, you know, it's all just to get the word out. And then I'll share these things into Facebook Messenger. And you know what I get? Not, hey, I'll share this because, hey, I know you're an activist and you're trying to make something happen. You're trying to change the world. I get a this. I get a thumb. I get the proverbial thumb. And for those of you who know me in thumbs, giving me the thumb may as well be giving me the finger. Okay? Because it's like, meh. Thumb is meh. Okay, yeah. Why don't, yeah. Sure, dude. Here's a thumb. Cannot fucking stand it. I'm not gonna lie. Hate it. Drives me absolutely insane. But whatever, right? Whatever. But the point is, you want people when you share it in Facebook Messenger, you're saying, "Can you please maybe click the like button? Click. Can you share this for us? Like, click." share hey if you're interested maybe listen to it oh okay and if you thought that whatever was involved in the actual podcast or video or whatever was interesting and worth your time maybe discuss it leave a comment so everybody knows hey man this is good stuff because if you just listen and you don't click like you don't subscribe you don't share people just think that this is just some clown show and if they think it's a clown show they're not going to take it seriously so this is kind of a community involvement thing. If you agree with what we're doing, you think what we're doing is worthwhile, please click like, please click share, please retweet stuff. Don't just ignore it. Retweet it, please give it some air cover, give it some oomph because unfortunately the stuff we talk about, it's a little deeper than some folks talk about. So it's not as clickbaity. So that means without an active involved group of people to help us get the word out there it's even more challenging now we're on tiktok 
We have Charles Hayden putting out TikTok after TikTok after TikTok. But we've got tons of stuff going on. We just need your help. We really need you to see the value in clicking like, subscribing, and sharing, leaving a comment. These things are not my rules. They're the rules of the algorithm. So in order for us to survive the algorithm, we need to play the game by the rules of the algorithm. And that requires our friends to really lift us up, to get us past. I think of the movie Moana, the cartoon Moana, okay? They kept trying to get past the reef, kept trying to get past the reef. As they would get to the reef, it would the wave would come up, flip the boat, crash them, and so forth. But when they finally broke over the reef, they got out into the calm open seas. The world was their oyster. That's what we need you guys to do is to help us get past the coral reef to get out to the sea so that we can hit new people. So we can stop preaching to the choir and we can start getting to new faces and new voices and new ears and new eyes and expand minds. Now, part of what I've done over the course of time is I started out as a Republican. Most of you all know my story. If you don't, I started out as a Republican. Then I became an LOL libertarian. Ron Paul, I supported Ron Paul. I supported the gold standard, everything that I'm no longer for, okay? Obviously a civil libertarian on privacy and things like that. But the flip side to that is, is that I I, I kept moving further left. Then I became a Democrat for voting purposes. And I, I don't think I've ever voted for a Democrat for president in my life. I've either written in a lefty, I've, um, sadly voted Republican years past. Okay. Um, but regardless, the point of this is, is that I've been on a journey and this journey keeps taking me further to the left. And as I drove through the democratic party and I realized they weren't doing any of the things I'm learning, I'm learning all this important stuff. And I'm like, why aren't they doing anything? Why aren't the Democrats doing anything? Why aren't they doing this stuff? Got all excited about Bernie, got involved in the Bernie movement, got really, really involved in the Bernie movement, which is a lot of the reason this place got started. But you see that the Bernie movement didn't produce people that were willing to hold their ground and stand in the way of the establishment Dems. So they all kind of rolled and getting all these universal votes, like just solid party line votes. It's like, ah, so I just kept moving left and I started reading history really digging into new history for a different set of eyes through Howard Zinn and through other informed people that really understood the way things were going from an anti-colonialist, anti-imperialist perspective. And I started developing even more leftist, uh, you know, theory and understanding going back to Lenin, digging deeply into the labor movement, heck going into the history of struggle and understanding things like the French revolution and going back to the fall of Rome. We have taken this podcast and our work to be much more inclusive. It's not a hot take, breaking news kind of thing. It's instead, it's intended to provide you with a new framework, a new new way of seeing the world, a new way of seeing the world. And that's my journey. And so you see me interview people like Clara Matei with the Capital Order. Clara Matei just rocked my socks. I love her to death. Her work is fantastic. People like Jason Hickel, who are just coming into MMT now, who are brilliant degrowth experts, love this guy. Like he is my spirit animal. People like Steve Keen, Michael Hudson, outside of the MMT main line, but on the adjacent side, good friends. But then, of course, you've got all the old timers like Warren Mosler and Bill Mitchell and Randall Ray, who we're going to be doing a book club for his new book. Uh, making money work for us. Can we make money work for us or something to that effect? Um, and you've got the newcomers like Yeva uh, and you've got uh, Fadal Kaboob and you've got Pavlina Chernova and others. And then you've got the next generation of these law professionals over at the MMN Modern Money Group. There's so many folks that we've supported over the years and been a part of elevating them while we were merely a vessel lifting their work up. Well, now it's time for us to take all the work we've done for the last decade almost and turn it into something really, really useful. Because ultimately, once you start getting past the point of just educating, you start getting into the political side of things, 
You're going to have the people that think reform is possible and they start working as reformists within a democratic party. You got the revolution folks, you know, think about Rosa Luxemburg and reformer revolution. You got the revolutionary side and you got folks like me that say, Hey, we've got actionable here and now things that we've got to do. So we've got to focus on protests, focus on direct action, focus on trying to make sure that the laws on the books serve the people that's today. That's here. That's now. But then we have the aspirational side where we've got to get people prepped and ready to understand what a working class is and understand class consciousness, understand historical and uh, you know, dialectical materialism, understanding the way the world is, the history of struggle, the history of movements, the history of economics, all these things at an activist level. Okay. That's where this is going. And I hope you'll stay with us and join us and help us build chapters. But we need people that aren't ready to take us in new directions. We need people that'll come in the door now and say, how can I help you with your existing projects? Not, hey, I've got this project I want to do. No, we, we're a nonprofit. We have things in motion. We need help with the projects that we've got on the books now. And once you become a member, once you become a volunteer, you can help us decide what projects matter, what projects we want to embark upon. It is an organization. We are a group of people. We're not individuals. We are individuals, but we work as one, as a collective. And so your involvement in that will help us achieve great things. But genuinely, our the, the thorn in our foot right now is that a lot of people out there, I don't know whether they're just jaded, whether they're just burned out on life, whatever, but finding real volunteers willing to do work willing to lean in. It's like amazing what people will do for a lie. They won't do for the truth. We need people that are willing to bend over backwards to try to make sure that truth gets out. Otherwise you're going to be stuck here in the same tired answers from your headline leftist politicians, headline leftist media, headline alternative media saying the same garbage that we're striving to break them from like the taxpayer dollar myth is just one of many. So please join us, get involved right here. Remember, get involved. I'll take you the RP events calendar. It really doesn't have much on it right now other than our lives. But you see, we even have Savage Joy on Monday nights doing the postmortem breakdown. Monday nights at 930. You got Rogue Scholar. You got Macro and Cheese that comes out on Saturdays, et cetera. So in any event, I'm going to get us out of here. Look down here at book club. Just know that we've done case for a job guarantee. We have all of those sessions recorded. And oh, I forgot this is a playlist. It's a big playlist. So if you go through here, see the deficit myth book club as well. I wish we could break that up by, by each one, but anyway. Um, I think I will ask our team to kindly break these things up into two so we can have different playlists for each one. Um, but there you go. Lots of really good stuff. Our, our website is full of information, folks. Full of information. Full of information to help you learn and grow. All right. You're not seeing my screen, but just trust me when I say this, I was looking at mine. <laughs> And let me share what I was looking at so you know what I was looking at. This is our, our book club right here. And you can see, oh, look at that. I always love to overdo my stop that. And we can come back up here. No, well, I guess we can't, can we? Can we? Yeah, we can. All right. So let's go back to RP Book Club. So it would be nice to see these playlists broken up into two, have the job guarantee there, and maybe right below it have the have the uh, deficit myth. You can come in here. You can check all of our stuff, even old stuff that we've had in here. We used to do something called MMT Mondays, another casualty of volunteers just randomly quitting at inopportune times <laughs> um but 
we've got a bookshop too. This is kind of a cool thing. We, we are an affiliate, so we're able to help raise uh, awareness of various books. If you come in here, all the books that we have either covered or the people we've interviewed are in here. You can get them here. You get a little teeny bit of a kickback. It's not much, if anything, but point is, is that we've got our own RP bookstore here. By all means, check it out. Environmental focus, quality and justice. More from macro and cheese podcast extras. Volunteer faves. There you go. So, all right, with that, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to end this podcast. I want to thank you guys very much um, for uh, being involved. Um, by the way, somebody said a keyboard warrior only. I tell you what, I would love to have keyboard warriors at this point. If we can somehow or another get folks to write articles, to help share, to help comment on streams, to be involved in that way, to moderate chats. My God, and if I can get people to get involved in our Facebook groups again, one more time, Modern Monetary Theory for Real Progressives. Go ahead, request entry. We'll let you in, okay? Real Progressives group, we'll let you in. Follow our page, please. I mean, we have our little area, and it's not so little. We've got, really, in the end, hundreds of thousands of followers. We used to reach millions before the algorithms really made life hell. So. With that, I'm hoping that you guys will see value, continue to see value, help us out building the university, help us write articles, help us write website content, help us really build out this thing by executing projects. I'll, I'll train you. I'm a certified project. I'll train you. If, you. if you actually will show up and do the work, I'm more than happy to meet you at that point to help you. But I, my time is limited because I'm doing a lot of things. So if you're not going to really seriously do it, I understand. But I'm willing for those people that are willing to really commit and do some work, I'm willing to work with you. I don't want to waste time anymore, folks. I want to get things done. And if you believe in the content that we're creating, please not only donate to help us with our year-end fundraiser, become a volunteer, please. We need your help. It, this stuff doesn't get done with the small team we have. Not the level, not the scope, not the the opportunity that we have, it can't be done without real support and you guys are who we're looking for. So with that, I am Steve Grumbine. I am the Rogue Scholar and I am out of here. Happy New Year, everybody. Till next year, see you in 2023. Bye. Yeah.